the, the Labor Leader of the Year, Mickey Kasparian. Thank you. And it's an honor to be introduced by two people who I have great admiration and respect for, both Juan and Lorena. Um, I've been told that I have about five minutes for my remarks, and that usually takes me uh, that long to just say hello. I've also been threatened by um, both Nathan and Rabbi Lori that I'm, if I'm not off in five minutes, they're going to tap me off of the stage. Now, I, I think I can give Nathan a run for his money, but I'm not messing with Rabbi Laurie, so I'm going to move this along quickly. You know, um, the award is great, but to me it's more important because of who it comes from. Rabbi Laurie, Jamie Gates, Lisa Maldonado, Sister Justine, Reverend Wayne Riggs, you have no idea the amount of respect and admiration that I have for you. For the work you do, day in and day out, for workers in this city, and for what you have done for, for Local 135 members, we will always be indebted to you. Thank you. You don't receive an award like this by yourself. This is a team effort, and I have to recognize, yeah, maybe I'm saying this on a selfish note, but the hardest working staff that you can ever find in a union, my local 135 staff, and I want to say thank you for everything you do. To, to the incredible workies, the workers at the Labor Council, the staff, Lorena with her leadership, and to all my brothers and sisters in all the unions, you're a great inspiration, and I see every day what you do for working people, and I'm proud to call you a partner. Um, my mom is here today. I want to recognize my mom. This, this may come as a surprise to a lot of you in this room, but I was a bit of a rebel as a kid growing up. Hard to believe, right? But my mom and dad always supported me, always stood by me, always loved me, and um, I, I, am, I love you more than you'll ever know. And finally, Finally, the person who is really my inspiration, my wife and my best friend, Sally. Um, I would never be on this stage without her support and her love. And uh, she's an amazing woman. She puts up with my uh, crankiness and my uh, moaning and my complaining. And, but she sacrificed a lot as well. And I love you so, so much. Um, so, you know, um, you know, I get to thinking, there's a lot of people in here from a lot of different walks of life, and we seem to, so many times, be working apart rather than together. We choose to go through an adversarial approach rather than a partnership. But we are more alike than we want to give credit for. I'll give you a couple of examples. I meet people all the time, and they'll say to me, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm the president of a labor union. Oh, you must be anti-business. And it's like, no, actually, I'm pro-business. Why would I be anti-business? Because I want business to flourish. I want business to grow. I want business to be successful. Because if that occurs, then the economy will flourish, jobs will be created, and we can get this city and this state and this country back to where we know it should be. Why would I be anti-business? But when a business is successful, I would expect that that business gives their workers dignity and respect, they pay them a livable wage with affordable health care and a secure retirement. And I'm going to say a bad word on this stage, I promised I wouldn't use any cuss words, pension. Because I know that's considered a bad word, but let me tell you something, if workers wanted to take their retirement and gamble with it, they go to Vegas and throw it on the crap table. Yeah. Workers should be receiving the defined benefit in this country. Yeah. And then 
911 to other people. What do you do for a living? Oh, I'm the president of a labor union. I don't like unions. Oh, you don't? That's okay. Do you work 40 hours a week? Yeah. Do you get paid sick days? Yeah. You get paid vacations? Yeah. You get paid holidays? Yeah. Where do you think those things came from? Unions. Sisters and brothers, unions are not part of the problem in this country. They're part of the solution. Because when workers who are organized, they are not a burden on taxpayers, they are able to spend money in the community, they support local business, and they make our economy flourish. See, it's kind of simple. Business helping labor, labor helping business. It's a simple fact. But we always screw it up, right? We confuse things. There are people, individuals, who want to put walls up on our borders so people stop coming. I'd rather put walls up on our borders so jobs stop leaving. So, let me say this, because I, I, I see Rabbi Lowy out of the corner of my eye, and, and, I, and I think she has a weapon, so. There you go. <laughs> Uh, then, then, I'll, then I'll really move it along. All right. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, we have an opportunity, and it begins at this breakfast. We have an opportunity to put our differences aside and work together. Whether you're a man or a woman, a Republican or a Democrat, a labor leader, a community leader, somebody from the faith community, a business owner, gay or straight, African American, Latino, Anglo, or Asian, it doesn't matter because we need to work together to support local business, support small and neighborhood business, support workers' rights to organize, so those workers in our city can be able to buy a vehicle, go on vacation, buy a home, send their kids to college, and that's the American dream that we know. That's the American dream that we love. So let's put up and let's shut up, okay? Let's work together, let's get it done, and I know everyone in this room can do that. Si se puede? Yes, we can. God bless you, thank you very much.